Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Punjab University Alumni Association, I welcome our main uh, um, our speaker today, Mr. Jackson Judan Fernandez. Our alumni members, Professor Seema Vinayak, Chairperson, uh, Psychology Department. Uh, Professor Deepti Gupta, Dean Alumni Association, our uh, students from psychology departments, and all the new participants uh, for this evening. Today is a very special day because when we started taking webinars, uh, when we started with uh, this online webinars thing, uh, uh, Dr. Jackson was one of our first speakers. And we have him back on popular demand because during that session, people demanded that, uh, requested that we need another session on this topic with him and he agreed uh, and today is also another important thing it is uh, Judan sir's son Jairus fifth birthday so happy birthday uh, to him from all of us sir may he uh, mm. all the happiness and health in life and a very ha hearty welcome to you uh, let me see if Seema ma'am is there I would like to invite her I think she is stuck in uh, her online, uh, she was delivering a lecture, she will be coming soon, so um, we will, uh, I will just introduce uh, you. Sir has been with us for a long time now uh, and uh, he uh, takes uh, yoga classes also, he has researched very well uh, about this topic. He is a practicing counseling psychologist and he caters to all age groups. And he also does a lot of uh, psychological therapies. And his latest interest is in the area of psychology of religion, counseling psychology, color therapy, human, uh, just a minute. humor therapy, and yoga. So uh, let's start with the session, sir. Over to you. Thank you, Sonia, for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon and a warm welcome to all the participants this webinar, I will start with thanking uh, Punjab University Chandigarh to give me this opportunity to explain or to uh, work on this topic, overcoming depression. So this are some of my details which are on the screen. After the session, if anyone has more questions, you all are free to contact me, visit my website, which have a load of depression questionnaires, which will also assess you whether you know, you are likely towards the depression scale or you are likely to get depression in the, in the future. So with this, I would like to start with my first slide. Before we start with this topic, I would like to explain what is depression. Okay, so as you see on your screen, depression is a major depressive disorder. It is a common and a serious medical illness that negativity, uh, negatively affects you, the way you think and how you act. Fortunately, it is also treatable. Depression causes feelings of sadness and a loss of interest in activities once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems and can decrease a person's ability to function at work and at home. Depression is a common and a serious disorder. Depression affects nearly 10% of the adults over eight, uh, the age of 18. Depression takes a toll in suffering, costs industries in billions, and can lead to suicide in some of the cases, family, friends, health, work, or, and, or school can also be seriously impacted by this disorder. However, depression is also a very treatable disease, and there is hope. So as you see on the screen, 30% of the adults and now with this, I would uh, like to explain to you the scientific research shows that depression affects a certain centers in the brain that affects mood. Let me go through the slides. Okay. So 
Depression affects 30% of the adult worldwide ages from 18 and over. Depression affects as many as 12% in women and 7% in men. Depression may come back in your later life through, through many uh, through many people, uh, may, some people may say it's a one episode, but it, uh, sometimes it comes back. Let me go into the symptoms of depression. Not everyone who is depressed experiences every symptom. Some people experience a few symptoms, some many. The severity of the symptom varies with the individual and also varies over time. Symptom can include the sad mood, frequent crying, feeling of hopelessness, loss of interest or pleasure in activities once enjoyed, difficulty in sleeping or oversleeping, physical slowing or agitation, jumpy, and or ag these are some of the symptoms loss of energy change in appetite guilty feeling feeling of worthlessness difficulty in sleeping difficulty thinking or concentrating thoughts of death or suicide physical symptoms may be headaches digestive disorder chronic pain and other routine treatment it can be also part of it anxiety with or without specific feeling of being depressed these are the symptoms of depression what are the types of depression uh, there are only four types but i'll explain to you in brief mdd it is called major depressive disorder this is a most a uh, serious form of depression. It's an episode of major depression that involves many of the signs and symptoms noted above, which I explained in the previous slide. Especially depressed mood uh, and lost of and lost of interest in pleasures in doing usual activities. This happens most of the day and nearly every day for at least few weeks. Once someone has an episode of major depression, he or she may experience more episodes at some time in their lifetime. Dysthemia. This is a less severe form of depression, that, but it has gone on longer or at least for two years. The most common form of features of dysthymia are loss of appetite or overeating, sleeping too much or too little, lack of energy or feeling tired all the time, low self-esteem, trouble concentrating, feeling of hopelessness. Some people may have both dysthymia or an episode of a major depression at the same time which is called also as double depression. The third one is bipolar depression. You must have been hearing this in the news uh, a lot. So depression can happen at law, at, it can happen as a part of another serious disorder called bipolar disorder. This illness can present as a depression or a combination of both. People can have a combination of depressed mood and drastically increased energy and agitation, are called like manic episode. Bipolar disorder runs in families and seems to be a disorder of body's chemical uh, change. That's a regulation system. Certain special medications such as lithium carbonate are used to treat bipolar disorder. This is information. Other medications used for depression, which 
are uh, which also help you uh, there's something called the unipolar depression the third one the fourth one sorry the seasonal affective disorder known as said a short form some people become depressed in winters this seems to because of less sunlight this is called seasonal affective disorders which also include which include depression but typically come and go sometimes in in every year this is simply called not also also called winter blues and should should not be ignored depression is also a very common among individuals who are diagnosed with substance abuse disorder this is commonly referred to as dual diagnosis in both cases the disorders must be dealt with and treated now let's move to what causes depression the very first one is hereditary depression seems to run in families some people seem to be born with the tendency to become depressed especially those who are under stress then chemical changes this is can be a result of abusing alcohol or drugs major life stress like upsetting life events or stresses that pile up the person may feel that he or she can't cope with all stresses and become sad and depressed depression is not a weakness but to give you an example of the major life stresses if there can be family or marriage problems job problems medical illnesses disability natural disasters and also of late because of corona many people suffering from depression then also financial problems losses of death so this stress also can result in a person becoming depressed and uh, you mean you also uh, there are other symptoms like you know coping with old age and chronic illnesses like diabetes asthma kind of heart failures and uh, you know and other disorders and other diseases this also can cause depression depression is not a weakness of character i have seen many people they come and say i have depression so getting depressed does not mean you are weak depression is a disease and usually needs treatment that is on extreme cases there are some depressions which people overcome over a period of time it can be the mild depression once your stress is reduced your depression reduces over time no one is to blame for your being depressed because mostly the depressed person will put the blame on others because of that person i am depressed because that person has given me this stress that person has altered the way i live the that person has affected my financial issues so so try uh, many, most of the time we try to blame many people are ashamed to admit they are depressed this is a major cause of concern many people don't sort for, uh, don't look out for help or don't even you know uh, express that you know what they are feeling but depression is a disease it is not your fault that you have it sometimes people tell you snap out of it or move along or be, uh, because they don't understand it and it is not your fault this is when you are in a set you know in a setting or group setting if you try to share your your uh, concerns or stress some of the people may ignore it but they will not consider that it is bothering you so you need to approach a right person or an elderly person who can help you out or visit or meet a doctor who can help you out so that the issue doesn't go out of hand depression can be treated effectively there are proven effective treatments for depression medication also help 
I will be touching on this subject, on this matter, as we go ahead with this presentation. Talk therapy. This is a very effective therapy, which I have been implementing it, and my clients have been recovering, and they are showing a positive result. Talk therapy is basically expressing what you're going through, what trauma or what stress you are going through in your life. If you try to express it to the person who is readily help, uh, going to help you out, don't try to express it to the person who's going to ridicule you. Like the poor. So that is also a very major concern because many friends, they talk among themselves, they talk to the wrong person, and then that information can be used against the person who has expressed. And the combination of these two medications and talk therapy can also help. It's just a suggestion. Many people who have been treated, uh, who have gone to the treatment of depression, are able to go back to working. Now, depression can also be helped through therapies. So it doesn't mean that medication is an ultimate solution to eradicate your depression. You need to uh, first go through a therapy. If the therapy doesn't work, then you need to visit a psychiatrist who will administer you the medication. Then those having seasonal affective disorder may also use, can also be helped by giving them a special light bulb. You know, try to illuminate your room. Try to keep your, uh, you know, house illuminated so that you don't feel that you're living in darkness. <clears throat> Sometimes people, uh, depressed people, are not able to take care of themselves. Their depression does not respond to therapy and medications. So for this, it's a, it's a separate or a different circumstances. This, for this, you need to visit a trained practitioner who can help you out. People who have had depression may get depressed again. This is a, also a very big concern because many people say, I have been I know, diagnosed with depression two years ago and it has relapsed after two years. Maybe the stress factor at that time has uh, right now. So maybe you, are, you may be able to reduce the risk by learning some ways to take care of yourselves. But you may be able to learn how to recognize another depression early and get help. So you need to train yourself. Most of the people, once they come out of depression, they uh, take it for granted that they may not get a depression episode in the late part of their life. But due to circumstances and uh, the nature of our lifestyle, all these things, it, the depression can come back. But it is not an, uh, you know, the sure shot, it can come back, but we must know or train ourselves to be prepared to be let me also look into, uh, show you some of the antidepressant medications also that can help you to recover from depression. Now, this is an extreme cases. All don't require antidepressant medication. Basically, with uh, psychotherapy, cognitive behavior therapy, you can, uh, you know, come out of depression. You don't have to be, why I don't recommend antidepressant medication is because most of the people, they become addicted to it and they be, it becomes their lifestyle, go-to um, uh, uh, cure, and also they continue in the later part of their life. So let me uh, explain to you some of the antidepressant medications. Medications affect your nerve impulses that travel between the nerve cells in the positive and negative emotion centers of your brain. There are several types of antidepressant uh, medications used to treat depression. Some people are helped more by one type of medication than other because people are given different medication depending on the type of depression they're going through. Medications differ uh, in their effect, side effect and cost. Many people don't also look into the side effects. There are a lot of side effects when you take medications. Only medications recommended by your doctor is advisable. 
However, all classes of medication tend to work equally well in reducing depression. Sometimes your practitioner will suggest you trying several types of medication, one or a combination. Frequent initial dosages needs to be adjusted to find the effective dose. And then later on, they temper with the medication to taper it to bring it down so that you are off the medication. Now, sometimes when you take this medication, this helps the transmission of signals and also restores a normal, uh, normal uh, nerve function and stabilizes mood. Taking medications. <clears throat> you may begin to feel a little better for the first few weeks after taking medication. But people who often stop medication too soon don't feel better and somebody's mic is on. Yes, I'm muting mics, but I would request the participants to themselves also keep their mics on mute, please. Sorry, yes. Okay. People often um, stop medication too soon. Now, this is just for general knowledge who have been taking medication. They may feel better and think. They don't uh, need it or they may think it's not working. But it is important to take medication for those who are already taking medication. Continue with the medication. Always talk to your doctor and express your feeling when for those who are taking medication. With that, let me move to the next. <clears throat> Practicing positive thinking can help you feel better. Have you ever heard the saying, a glass can be half empty or half full? This shows how it is possible to think in different ways about the same thing. When you see a glass as half full, this is a positive thought. You are looking for good thinking, things about the situation. When you say the glass is half empty, this is a negative thought. You are looking at the bad parts of the same situation. So this, is, this can be used in your daily lives. The same can be true of your life. If you look at your life and see only the bad parts and you are likely to be or to stay depressed. But if you teach yourself to look for the good things in life, this often reduces depression. Even very bad things don't happen all the time. There are always part of our day, parts of our life that are going well. But when you are depressed, it is hard to see them unless you look at them very closely. Seeing only the bad parts of your life and worrying about them can easily become a habit. This can, ha this can help keep you depressed, but looking for the good parts can become a habit too. If you practice, this may help you get over depression. The same is true for thinking of the future. When you are depressed, the future looks bleak. But if you can practice good things, you would uh, be happy for the future. With this, I would like to uh, show you some uh, very rare, effective exercise. Uh, you can you can take a screenshot or you can write down. You need to prepare on the left. There are five things that are try to write five things that are bad or wrong with your life. On the right side, uh, write five things that are good for you. Once you have made both the list, 
read out the bad list. How do you feel? Now over, go, move over to the good list. Read them over and over. And you will be surprised to notice that reading the good list feels better than reading the bad list. So this is a simple exercise which you follow so that you can prevent or reduce your depression. Changing thoughts that can make you feel bad. This is a very important part of uh, overcoming depression. To some thoughts and expectations lead to bad feelings and depression. Look for the good aspects of each situation. They are always there if you look hard enough. And sometimes they hide in plain sight. Learn to spot when you have thoughts that lead to bad feelings. You may have them all the time and you do not realize it. They become a bad habit. Replace those thoughts that lead to a good feeling. This takes practice. So try to practice to move those bad feelings to a good feeling. It takes the same amount of energy to say to yourself, I will do well at this, as to say, I will fail at this. But it feels so much to think about being well. Don't only remember those things that didn't turn as you would like. You have succeeded at many things. Realize it and congratulate yourself. Recognize bad self-talk. You may have talks with yourself and you may repeat those bad thoughts over and over. Once you catch yourself doing this, practice talking back with positive good messages. Don't blame yourself when things go wrong. There are always many reasons for why things happen the way they do. Don't blame others when things go wrong. I know it's difficult to follow it, but if you put this into practice, you it will be of great benefit to you. Especially the loved ones and co-workers, most things happen for a combination of reasons. Practice recognizing all the reasons for the situation and figure out what you can do about it. Avoid black and white thinking. The things that are good and all bad. Nothing is ever all, all bad. There are some good things to think about. Don't go on complaining about hard times and difficulties. Even as you go as far as making things even seem worse than they really are, focus on how things are really are. Then it is much easier to think of ways to make the situation even better. Focus on activities that feel better. Make a daily schedule. Write down the activities, what you're going to do in the near future, the next hour, the next day, the next three days, the next week. Increase activities that you enjoy, like find a pleasant relaxing activity, which will some games. Focus on thoughts and activities that are upsetting to you. Pay attention to those things that help and feel better. Try to do more of it. Practice replacing negative thoughts with positive thoughts, the way I told you in the previous slide. Practice expressing strong feelings in a calm way. Keep a sense of humor. Try to watch videos which uh, give you a sense of humor or try to be with people who are having a good sense of humor. Focus on the present and here and now. Try not to dwell on the past and think about the future. Try to work on the things at hand. Let me move to the yoga part of it. 
yoga for depression. So if you see here, this is a very simple, uh, it's called balasan, it's, it's called child pose. So this can also help you. You can do this on a mat or do it on a mattress or on your bed. So but uh, I'll just explain to you in brief what these poses are. These are some of the few poses which will help you to relieve depression or to come out of it or to relieve you from anxiety. Balasan also helps you to calm your brain and it relieves stress and anxiety. It gently stretches your lower back and hips and enables your body to relax. Peace and calm prevails over your entire body and helping you deal with depression. The next is uh, Setu Bandhasan or you can say Chakrasan. It's your choice. Setu Bandhasan strengthens your back muscles and relieves your tired back because tired back also gives you depression makes you or leads to depression we have seen because many people sit for a long duration time on chairs or during uh, commuting and now of late people are working from home so most of the people are sitting on the chair for a longer duration or lying on the bed for a longer duration so this asan helps you to strengthen your back not I'm not saying that all can do it, but you can slowly start doing this. It also helps you for your heart, opens up your heart. It makes you feel lighter and at ease. The upward facing dog, it's Urdhva Makkha Shavasan. It, is, it can easily help you to, mild, to cure mild fatigue and depression. It is overall a rejuvenating effect on your body. And all the stress, stress, uh, all the stress which is uh, on the back, which, which will vanish. Now, the, to to I will not explain how to perform it. As you see on the photo, they are very simple. So it's and also you get it on the internet. So if you can search, and there are videos. And also at the end of the session, if possible, whoever wants, I will share the videos how to perform this asanas. Then downward facing dog pose. It is Adho Mukha Shavasan. Uh, it enables the fresh blood to flow into your body. It stretches your neck, cervical spine, releasing stress in them and thereby reducing anxiety and calming you down. The next Sarvangasan or Halasan flow up. Halasan, uh, it, is, it is very good to reduce strain on your neck and enhances your posture. It calms your brain and gives you a good stretch and reduces stress. This uh, asana also is very good because, you know, nowadays with the mobile, many people having neck issues. And uh, with the neck issues starts the migraine, the stretch, uh, the stress on the brain. You have constant pain on your shoulders. Because every time you need to look down to watch your mobile or the screens, maybe the iPad or the television. The next is um, standing forward fold pose. This is what's called Uttasan. It's also very good to help you. It relieves tension on your back, shoulders, and neck and improves functioning of your nervous system. It calms you and reduces stress. And the next is Advas, reverse corpse pose or Shavasan. It is also rejuvenates you and your body and helps the body to relax. It reduces blood pressure and lets the, lets the effects of the previous poses you have done, which I have demonstrated. And it helps you to sink in better so that your body is relaxed. Let me move into the pranayama for depression, anxiety, and for greater energy. Nadi Shodhana, it's an alternate nostril breathing. It balances the subtle life, energy of the body, and the two sides of your brain. It calms the mind and increases vitality. And it's a good basic, basic pranayama for depression and emotional imbalance. You need to sit down, as you see on the poster, you need to use your thumb and uh, to close the nostrils to breathe in and breathe out. 
The next one is Surya Beda. It is called the right nostril breathing. Especially it is a good pranayama for depression. And also it helps you to relieve lethargy, dullness, difficulty in communication and withdrawal from the external world. So this is basically you need to breathe in and breathe out through your right nostril. Like placing your right hand in front of your face as above. If you see the picture, cover the left nostril with the ring finger. Inhale slowly and deeply through the right nostril. At the end of the inhalation, close both the nostrils. Hold the breath in and gently lower your chin towards the chest. And when you tighten and when you have to go and uh, breathe out. So this is a very good one. The next I recommend is Kapal Bhakti. It is a skull shining breath. The next one is Bastrika. It is a bellows breath. It is you use your nostrils and you use your abdomen. If you see in the picture, when you inhale, you fill your belly out. And when you exhale, it is the belly. So this is a very good pranayama which will help you out during or before, during your episodes of depression. Next, you need to make your physical activity. The next physical activity, take care of plants and gardens. This, this has helped many people when they look after their own gardens or plants or, you know, take a walk, exercise, increase pleasant activities, read a book, learn or read or listen to audio music or audio ebooks. Meditate and pray, increasing the amount of light, sunlight, early in the day is known to affect the symptoms of depression. There's many people who don't go out of their houses. I would recommend them to take an early morning sun rays. Also, you will get vitamin D at the same time. And also, it will uh, activate your mood, you know, to look at the world brightly. Increasing the sunlight is very important because it protects your skin and eyes from UV rays. And people with seasonal affective disorder are more prone, or more prone to mood problems for them because of reduced sunlight. So I recommend you to take sunlight as much as you can. Try to avoid alcohol, excessive alcohol or other depressants or drugs. Those also lead you to to, uh, to depression. Try to, and also those alcohol and drugs and other, like even smoking, they also lead you to be more stressed, and more stress leads to depression. Limit your, ca uh, your caffeine, nicotine, and other stimulants, especially late in the day, because you will not get the required amount of sleep, and without the required amount of sleep, you will lead, it will lead into depression. Eat well-balanced and nutritious food. Try to uh, adopt a more vegetable, more salads in your uh, daily uh, diet. Practice a good self-sleep uh, habit. Try to at least uh, sleep for seven hours in the night so that you can recover from stress, you can think better. Avoid paid and extreme diets. Spend time with others who make you feel happy. I have seen through many, many people, they like to go towards those people who are already depressed or already having problems. And then their depression moves on to the person who's all, who is going to get depressed. You know, so try to spend time with those people who make you or who enjoy your company. Joining a support group. This is a, an area which I would like to touch. There, there is a website. These are some of the websites you can visit. So, and there's also my website, which I mentioned here. So you can come, there are a lot of uh, articles, how to overcome depression, or I can give you a one-to-one -one consultation. And these are some of the websites which are uh, used around the world. They are free resources, which will help you out. There may be some questions which you are unable to find from, from, your, uh, from your neighbor or from your friends which resources you can pull from this information and help you. Next, 
A very important uh, aspect is many people say all human beings or uh, male and female have a similar depression. I would like to just go, go into this. If you look at the, at the slide here, you will see that male and female have different types of depression, the, the way they exhibit it. You know, the female depression, they blame themselves. The male depression, they feel others to blame. If you go through the slides, I will just read a few because of the time constraint. Uh, you know, the female depression, they feel anxious and scared. If you look at the male side, they feel suspicious and guarded. They, uh, some of the female depression, they avoid conflicts at cost, but male depression, they cause conflict. So these are some of this uh, depression where you can see where you can differentiate between a male and female depression. So you can take a screenshot or write it down if you only because this topic needs uh, I a mean, lot of uh, you know a lot of time to explain in detail. But these are some of this which I have uh, I have put across so that you can go through it. And if you have questions, I'm uh, on this. I am free uh, to discuss in length. So whenever you need, even after the session, you can you can send me a WhatsApp or you can email me. I will provide at the end of this. Men and women depression. Sir, you I'd like to explain the presentation, or are you asking for the questions right now? No, I'm not asking. I have just few more few more slides, okay. and I'm done. Please Give me another it. five to ten minutes. Okay. Sir. So, so I would like to express uh, men, man and woman express dep uh, depression dif uh, differently and have a different co ways of coping with symptoms. Depression in older men, like uh, you know, the older men, they may feel depressed upon retirement or from the loss of being unimportant. Because when they were working, they were they felt they were very important, but after after retirement, they don't feel they lost the loss of self esteem, the loss of friends, the onset of health problems, then suicide. This is also another topic which I would like to discuss. Many more than four times as many men as women die by suicide. You know, it just makes you laugh. Even so, it just seriously, you know. The videos, hello, can you? Can you hear me? Yeah, many yes, people yes. with yes. Uh, okay, many men with depression do not obtain adequate diagnosis and treatment or life saving. They uh, even their family members or their friends don't come to their help, so they may end up you know getting su uh, committing suicide because they feel their depression cannot be resolved. So I would recommend those people to sort out for help, look out for help. From a psychologist, from a psychiatrist, or from your own uh, family doctor, or your the hospital close by. Diagnostic and evaluation and treatment. This I'll just touch a few part of it. The first step of getting appropriate treatment for depression is a physical examination by a physician. Certain medications, as well as uh, some medical conditions such as viral infection, thyroid disorder, or a low testosterone level can sometimes cause the symptoms of depression. The physician should uh, rule out these possibilities through examination, interviews, or lab tests. If no such depressive symptoms is found, the physician should uh, do a psychological uh, evaluation or refer the patient to a mental health professional so that they can you know, look into it in more detail. Why depression is different in women? Women are a greater risk of depression than men. Major depression and dysthymia affect twice as many women as men. Some of the symptoms what I would uh, like to share is reproductive, hormonal, abuse, passed down by generations, get, not getting along with others, certain, getting, uh, you know, certain emotional and uh, lifestyle behaviors. The many depressions uh, also can be because of the responsibilities at home and work. Some of them because of single parenthood, caring for children. This all can lead to depression. Sometimes it's taken lightly. Also the quality of your marriage, that also can lead to depression. Then reproductive, uh, reproductive events, 
like um, you can say postmortem postpartum mood changes pregnancy menopause victimization this all can lead to depression then uh, let me run because the time is going through let me give you the low the let me conclude with the road or to recovery treatable illness medications work even severe depression uh, there are uh, let me work on the first one even severe depression can be highly responsive to treatment you should know that the modern treatment for depression are shown to have effective process of recovery of course treatment will not eliminate life's in inevitable stresses and ups and downs but it can lead to a greater enjoyment of life the first step in treatment for depression should be a true examination to rule out any physical illnesses that can cause depressive symptoms medications medications there are several types like serotonin uptake inhibitors tricycle mois serotonin uh, anephrine uptake inhibitors so these are some of the medications which help you but i recommend you the doctors to visit a doctor before taking any medication of 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 the chart the path of to healing reaping the benefits of treatment is by recognizing your signs of depression you need to be first evaluated then go through all the procedure of meeting the doctor and looking after yourself and also try to keep in contact with your friends so that your friends know about you let me give this the gist of it talk to your mental health professional don't feel shy don't be uh, don't shy away from the stigma choose a treatment professional consider yourself as a partner in treatment and be informed and also cons- uh, help your partner also for those who are married so and then with this i would like to conclude we believe strongly that people can can, can learn to deal with uh, with depression successfully and that there are many things that can be helpful with treatment many persons who have been depressed have gone on to enjoy life be productive and have good relationships with their family and friends with the last i would like to conclude with a quote depression is the in- inability to construct a future by rollo may with this i would like to conclude thank you very much for patiently listening to my presentation i would uh, also i would rec- uh, thank you and also it may be helpful for you or you can help others around you with my presentation thank you thank you so much sir <clears throat> but we uh, we are not letting you go uh, so easily we have a lot of questions for you uh, no problem uh, there is one question um, how to make the client or how to make a person um, who is depressed take up actions against depression this is from uh, kavita sarvesh how how to convince him to take up uh, actions against depression the first thing is you need to identify once you identify that the other person is depressed means he is he is having less he is not doing his activities like he is not going to not studying first you need to identify once you identify then you can talk to the person to seek help maybe you can seek help from the elderly person in the house first and if you see that that elderly person is unable to help you can visit the mental health professionals who will help you if they requires medication then you can visit the psychiatrist okay sir so then there is a, a question from uh, our friend uh, dr shashi chaudhary ma'am you can unmute and ask your question i know you can do it easily i'll unmute you okay yeah okay my question is uh, that uh, usually depression is diagnosed in individuals after certain incident happens in their life so doesn't it mean that it is a part of personality of that 
as earlier you said it is not the weakness of character but isn't it related to the personality that person is not able to take care of that handling of that particular incident yes you are correct but that uh, what the the point what i was said is many people they say when they are depressed i i am weak but they don't sort uh, you know they don't look out for help they they only live with that notion that they are depressed they are weak but you need to you know uplift those persons telling that you can move ahead from this depressed life sort help or change some lifestyles and become stronger and also related to the stress it depends from person to person some people can are able to help themselves depending on whatever stress is given to them with this I, you have any other doubts huh? everything is fine thank you very much Okay. Very clear. Yes, sir, uh, uh, there is a question uh, from Mandita. She says, we know many things that we have yoga, meditation during depression, but how can we apply it? I don't understand the question really. Uh, I'll repeat it. We know many things that we have yoga, meditation during depression, but how can it, can we apply it? Yes. Now, if you the result, I'll answer this in two parts. If you one self is having depression, you need to identify yourself. It's very easy to identify. If you are not able to do your daily activities, not able to talk to your neighbors, not able to talk to your colleagues, or you are, so you need to make your own program. But I would suggest you to meet a mental health professional so that he recommends you what is important. Maybe sometimes the yoga may not work. A simple walk will help you. So this is the first part. The second part is if you find somebody else depressed, you can, uh, depending on that person's ability, suppose he has, uh, uh, you know, joint pains, he will not be able to perform the asanas, but he will be able to perform the pranayama. So with that, his depression will decrease. It depends on case to case basis. Some Sometimes yoga helps, sometimes yoga, it, it helps, but it takes a longer time. Okay, uh, sir, next question from uh, Stanzin. How is depression diagnosed in a kid? Is, and another question is from uh, D. Silva. Is anger a part of depression? Yes. Anger also is a part of depression because it is a way of, see, how is anger uh, built in your body? It is because of stressful life or the situations which are, which are out of your reach. You know, some situations we don't. But what when we, have, we have a lot of pent up anger inside us. Sometimes we throw this anger on the person around us or we exhibit this anger through you know, then we ourselves also go through that anger is through our body illnesses. It can lead to depression or it can also, uh, you know, give, uh, help you also. But also, but anger also is part of you uh, leading to depression. Uh, uh, Ms. Harpreet Kaur is, uh, wants to ask a question. She has not typed it. Yes, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I I sir, just wanted to know, I mean, I have uh, lived with patients of depression. What I feel bad about is the stigma associated with the disease while the patient is not to be, I mean, you know, blamed because I believe it's a genetic problem or it is some other trigger but the society doesn't take it kindly like they are more kinder to a person with a heart disease who might have right. overeaten and not taken care so how can we remove this stigma the first thing is you need to remove the stigma is you need to meet the family members. because see once you once you treat the person for depression and you put the person back into the society the family members are the first people who will be trained how to you know look after him once the family members are trained then the neighbors have to be trained and then the neighbors then the society but you know you cannot train the whole world but you can only train his immediate 
or the uh, immediate environment that is his family friends so that they when they look on on to this person they they don't feel sorry for him but they help him out uh, that's that is the only you know the like a quick method to help the from the sigma right right thank you yeah. sir welcome yeah the other thing i was going to ask you is uh, when you're depressed uh, they say that working in a pressurized job is better for you is that correct uh, it it can be also effective because when you put pressure on a person the person uh, you know the way he exhibits will be different maybe he may be able to cope with it or he may be unable to cope with it when he is unable to cope with it the stress will build over a period of time and that stress will lead to depression uh, thank so, you very much that's well, answered thank you uh, sir um, there is ms parun she has said that her grandpa uh, her grandfather suffers from depression from the last 35 years and he's taking the same medicine from the uh, last 35 years when we tell him that you're okay now and you're not suffering from depression he doesn't listen so what should we do that can be because of addiction because he is used to that kind of a uh, you know lifestyle of taking medication and uh, and and also his mindset is fixed telling that he is already depressed and i need this medication so it will take time he needs uh, basically in psychology he needs psychotherapy you know it's a, it's like a, to make him understand that he is overcome it and he has moved from that phase to a newer phase of life where he is uh, no, not reliant on medicines or has moved away from depression so there is a request if you can speak on this uh, thing again uh, in a little detail that uh, mm -hmm. this depression is not a weakness in character because a lot of students are also here so can mm -hmm. you please elaborate on this yes please now when i said uh, depression is not a weakness in your character because see everyone has to go through stress this is going to be part of your life whether you are in you know in your student life when you are in your work life when you are in married life even in your old age now many people say as now is the character because you are angry so that is part of his character they try to you know label him but you cannot label depression because depression is not going to be regularly with you depression will move over a period of time if you are stressful or it depends on circumstances your environment around you the working and life conditions all these factors will help or uh, or break you so when you are it should not be part of your character you know it should not define you i am depressed so i am unable to do it that is not the ultimate or the final answer you need to move away from depression so to move away from depression you cannot stick or you know stick a label to yourself i am weak i am bound to have depression i am going to be part of this depression whole my life no you need to move out of that stigma or the label try not to label yourself and move ahead so try not to use it is as a character like like others say i say there is a person who has this character where he is using sense of humor so that is a character which we shall not make him weak but it will strengthen him you know he will have more relationship with people more people will approach him he will be approachable to the people people will understand him better so the same applies to depression hope i answer uh, answer your question if you still need more detail explanation i am ready to help but it will take some more time it will require 30 to 40 minutes of my time so, uh, one a little controversial question if you would like to answer yes, it is please. your choice it is from mr tejinder singh kalra uh, any comments with respect to sushant singh rajput sahib would you like to comment on this uh, no no comments no no comment i don't want to be on news <laughs> <laughs> oh, i can understand that um, with that sir let me say yes um, one uh, last question um, nowadays in some uh, in time of pandemic of, of corona everyone is in stress some tips to overcome stress that is from srishti and uh, srishti sir also takes uh, workshops on stress management and one more thing sir uh, please answer this question uh, along with this question that how can we tell 
a kid that means depressed and do we need to tell a kid that means? Uh, let me uh, so you want me to even so ask how can we, maybe how can we judge uh, or make out that a kid is depressed how can we decide on that the first thing is to identify the routine of your child so your, your son or your daughter has to get up at 6 in the morning and you will see that he or she is getting up at 12 in the afternoon on a daily basis and the, and the mood maybe the eating food or uh, you know stop playing stop interacting with others so these are identifiable factors which you need to identify as a parent so to know that your kid is going through no i'm not saying they're going to go through depression but you know this is the early signs which you need to identify but you cannot tell the kid that you're because the kid may not understand the word depression so i think i misunderstood the question uh, the, the question was just how can we tell that a kid is un, uh, that a kid is depressed it must be that you know how can we add it? Yes. And the other questions are some tips to overcome the stress related to this. So now stress, I no the stress. I would uh, like to go openly on on record to practice yoga as much as you can. It is you can practice at your own pace. Do it at home. Go to do uh, physical activities. If you don't want to do yoga, you can do other sports, whichever interests you. Each one of you all have, uh, pers- uh, you know will have different talents among you. You can, uh, but make you make sure that you are into any physical sport. So that will help you to, you know, channelize your energy towards the other spectrum where you can, you know, come out of it. Depression, basically, I'll explain to you, is mostly dwelling on the past or dwelling on your stressful life. So this will just alter or shift balance. So you need to keep yourself occupied, keep yourself uh, focused on uh, you know moving ahead in life then to dwell in the past or to dwell on what's happening right now in the present because what what is happening in the present is only thing is in your hand which you can you know uh, help help yourself or you can rectify it but the future will be on how you pre- uh, you know place yourself in the present hope well, i answered the well, question yes you have answered a lot of questions and uh, if there are any more questions uh, sir please give them your uh, email id or uh, how you can be contacted all our messages yes. and guests yeah. and you. also uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, lecture and the tips and um, all the yoga asanas so it, i don't think it's easy for us to do such complicated <laughs> Asana's no, only, 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 get, two, only two, three are complicated. The others are easy. I think with practice we can, you know. Yes. And so practice. Yes, and we have uh, the chairperson of uh, psychology department, and also Deepti ma'am is with us. So I invite Seema ma'am, uh, please uh, unmute yourself, and uh, you can, you know, uh, switch on your camera also. Please come on the screen. Okay. And good Deepti evening. Ma'am also. I can hear you, but we cannot see you. Good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, on behalf of uh, Punjab University Alumni Association uh, and Department of Psychology, would like to thank all the participants uh, for joining us today. And uh, we are honored uh, to have uh, Dr. Jackson Fernandez with us. Uh, and for a very informative and interesting in, uh, presentation. Sir, you have explained a very important and a sensitive issue of depression in a very simple way. Uh, your observations about gender differences in depression are very interesting. And the way you have explained yoga and the importance of yoga and physical exercises in improving one's life and making it a healthier one is uh, certainly a uh, a type uh, is certainly a step towards increasing positivity in one's life. So I must um, say that the way you have explained was really excellent. You have made this complex issue very simple and I'm sure our participants must have enjoyed it and they must have learned a lot from uh, all the steps you have explained to make a life healthier and how to control uh, anxieties and depressions in your life. 
So thank you very much. And we look forward to have more uh, such informative and interesting interactions with you. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Professor Deepti for, uh, and Sonia for uh, providing us this opportunity to have an interaction with you. Sonia, I'm very sorry. I'm not able to switch on the uh, video because of the connectivity problems, but maybe uh, next time when we have. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jackson. Thank you. Ma'am, the voice is very clear. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank okay, you, ma'am. Uh, can you please come on the camera? Thank you, Dr. Jackson. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Professor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jackson, for a wonderful session. And thank, thank you, you, friends, for the care and attention that you devote to the Alumni Association. It's always our uh, effort to bring you a range of uh, variety, a variety of topics for the webinars. So this month, month you have a tremendously diverse range. Sonia, would you like to tell everyone about what we have in store for them? Yes, uh, we are going to have one on uh, Mughal jewelry, the next one. Wow. Uh, so, and, and the modern impact, uh, how it has been you know, used in the present day designs. Then we have on the rural uh, Himachal Pradesh, uh, biogas, biogas production in Himachal Pradesh. Then we have on teaching, uh, you know, strategies in teaching. So we also have a mushkera. So uh, we would like everyone to, you know, uh, be in touch and we'll keep sending emailers and uh, reminders and messages. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, Dr. Jackson's, uh, you know, webinar will also be there. Sir, uh, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen, I would like to click a picture. And I will also request everyone uh, if they can, you know, open their uh, cameras for our uh, video commission. I will take a picture. I have also put a link for feedback as uh, a lot of participants requested last time. So uh, in the chat, you can find the feedback form and uh, we will share this with some because uh, that is going to be our regular guest, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so please switch on your cameras. Hello, Zanita. Everybody, please switch on your cameras so that we can see your beautiful smile. Yes, I saw Dr. Kent also in the uh, beginning. I don't know. Professor Kent, please switch on your camera. Okay. Good to see you, Charu. Good to see you. Good to see you, Shashi. Let me click the picture with your permission. Shashi, ma'am, hello. I was. Shashi, ma'am, had preponed her class to attend this session. Wow, we need so, that kind of dedication. She was in the last session also. I can see Mr. Sanjeev Mahajan here. Good to see him. Jula Sridhar. It is a good time to connect with our uh, alumni. Yeah, it's wonderful to see you Best all. Yes. But your pictures, Sonia? Yes, ma'am, I took the pictures. Sir, would you like to uh, give a message for your son? Uh, he can, you know... Uh, oh yes, yeah. Dr. Jackson, many happy returns of the day. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Your son is receiving blessings from all of us. Thank you very yeah. much. Do you want to say something to him? Uh, Congratulations, uh, uh, Dr. Fernandez, and best wishes for your son, please. Thank you. Okay, so with your permission, so with your permission, may I have anything? Thank you, everyone, for coming. Please send the feedback form. See you in our next webinar. Thank you. Bye bye. We are waiting for your feedback form. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.